Hello and welcome to another video on estimating and in this video we're going to look at estimating the square root of non-perfect squares. Now in the previous video we came up with a general rule for estimating and we said that when we wanted to estimate a calculation we could round each number in that calculation to one significant figure and that would give us a good idea of what the true value would be. But when we're estimating the square root of non-perfect squares then we're going to come up with a slightly different technique of doing that. So the square root of 30, now I would not be able to work out what that is, pen and paper, and even using a calculator, um, it doesn't give us an exact value because the square root of 30 is an irrational number. So this will be a decimal that just keeps going on and on forever. So the square root of 30, how could I work out an estimate for the answer to this? Well, I know my square numbers, most of my square numbers anyway, up until a certain point, and if I just think about the perfect squares close to 30, well, I know that the square root of 25, 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. And the next square number is 36. So if I take the square root of 36, well, that is 6. So I can see that the square root of 30 will be between 5 and 6. Okay, so it's going to be approximately 5 point something. Now, how close is it, or where does it fit between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36? Well, 30 is about halfway between 25 and 36, so I would say that this is going to be roughly or approximately 5.5. So if I type the square root of 30 into my calculator, I get an answer of 5.47722575. So this is what shows up on my calculator display, and even this isn't going to be exact. OK, this number will carry on going forever. Okay? And the only reason it stops here is because the uh, memory on the calculator display is only capable of displaying this number of digits. But you can see that my answer is very close to what the calculator gives me as my answer. So I should be quite happy with my estimation there. So let's do one more example. And this time, let's estimate the square root of 10. So we're going to use the same method as we did up here. We're going to identify what the perfect squares are below and above 10. So the one below 10 is going to be 9. So I know that the square root of 9 is exactly 3. And the next square number is 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. So just like before, I know that my answer is going to be approximately 3 point something. Okay, But this time, it's much closer to 9 than it is to 16. Okay, 10 is much closer to 9 than it is 16. So my answer is going to be closer to 3 than 4. So I'm going to say approximately 3.2. Um, and again, I don't know if it's, that's exactly right. So let's work it out on the calculator. So square root of 10. And when I type that in, my calculator tells me the answer is 3.162277666 dot dot dot. Because that number will just go on forever because it is an irrational number. So my answer of 3.2, well, again, that's quite close to my calculator display. And if I round this to one decimal place, I do indeed get 3.2. So that was a pretty good estimate there. OK, so it's over to you now. Why don't you have a go at pausing the video and estimating the answer to these values here? And these last three questions, six, seven and eight, these are the cube roots. So a bit trickier here, but uh, have a go at doing it yourself. OK, so question number one, the square root of 19. Well. The square numbers below and above 19 are 16 and 25. So the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. So I know that my answer is going to be between 4 and 5, because 19 is between 16 and 25. But whereabouts will it be between 4 and 5? Well, it's closer to 16, so it's going to be less than 4.5. So I'm going to say approximately 4.3. And we'll check the answers with the calculator at the end, but I'll say 4.3 for that one. OK, the next one, 44, square root of 44. Well, the square numbers below and above 44 are going to be 36 and 49. So the square root of 36 is 6. And the square root of 49 is 7. And it really helps if you know your square numbers. So it's going to be between 6 and 7, uh, but this time it's closer to 7. So I would say that's going to be approximately... 6.8. Okay, the next one, 140. Well, I know that 12 squared is 144, so square root of 144 is 12. 
Uh, and the one below that, 11 squared is 121. So the square root of 121 is 11. So this time it's much closer. It's going to be between 11 and 12, but it's much closer to 12. So I would say it's approximately 11.9. Okay, the next one, 75, square root of 75. Um, so 8 squared is 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. And then 9 squared is 81. And the square root of 81 is 9. So again, it's going to be between 8 and 9. This time it's a bit closer to 9. So let's go with approximately 8.7. Let's see. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be quite close. So as we go into number 5, the square root of 300. Well, I know my square numbers up to a certain point. But um, I know 16 squared is 256. So let's work out what 17 squared is. I've just done some traditional old fashioned long multiplication here and I can see that 17 squared is 289. So it's going to be greater than 17. It looks like it's going to be between 17 and 18, but let's just work out what 18 squared is first. And I can see that 18 squared is 324. So it is approximately uh, halfway between these two. So let's go with approximately 17 point. It's slightly closer to 17. So 17.4. OK, now these next three, we're working out the cube root. So it would help if you know your cube numbers. So let's just write down our cube numbers. Now, one cubed is one. Two cubed is eight. Two times two times two. Three times three times three is 27. Four times four times four is 64. And I can see we're going up to 109. So let's do five cubed. Five cubed is 125. So now we've got all of our cube numbers. We should be able to um, estimate these. So the first one, cube root of 7, well, 7 is it's going to be between 1 and 2. Okay, it's slightly closer to 2, so let's say this is approximately 1 point, let's go with 1.8. Okay, the next one, the cube root of 30, well, again, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. So it's going to be between 3 and 4, and again, it's closer to 3, so let's go with 3.1 for this one. And the last one, 109. So 4 cubed is 64. So it's going to be between 4 and 5. So it's going to be 4 point. And let's go with 4.7. Just because it's, it's closer to 5 than it is to 4. So 4.7. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to evaluate all of these using my calculator to see how close we got. Now just as a bit of fun to finish with, have a look at your estimations and see if any of these were exactly the same as the correct answer. So here you can see I'm 0.1 away from the correct answer. Here I'm 0.2 away. Here I'm 0.1 away. Here I've got exactly the right answer when we round to one decimal place. This one I'm 0.1 away. Here I'm 0.1 away. Here I've got exactly the right answer. And here I'm 0.1 away. So all of mine were quite close. The furthest away I got was question number two. But I got two of them exactly correct. So see if you can beat two out of eight. And if you can, then... Although I don't have any prizes, just give yourself a pat on the back. I'll see you in the next video.